So, you want to make better games. Maybe your game feels a bit off or like something is missing. Maybe it looks like sh** or god forbid you're stuck in mid-development hell. Well, here's 5 tips that will make your game so much better. This is Bob. Currently, he looks really boring. Sorry Bob. But what if we made him squish when he jumps? What I've done there is called Game Juice, more commonly known as Game Feel. But why stop there? Let's make him squish when he lands, uh, let's add some little dust particles, and piece by piece you can see how this already looks a million times better than when we started. Juice is just the little things in your game that make it feel more satisfying to play. So another example is adding a trail to your sword, or making the camera shake. Let's break down this explosive barrel in my old zombie shooter game. We have a few components that make the effect. We have an explosion particle, a ripple effect, a camera shake, and these little debris that fly off. When we combine all these, we get a pretty satisfying result. If you want to look at someone who does game juice really well, take a look at Danny's games. These games perfectly encapsulate what game juice actually is. He has nice particle effects, smooth animations, camera shakes, and basically everything that makes his games not only look nice, but feel nice to play. Now yes, obviously movement is a key part of games, but nailing this movement is really crucial to having a fun game. So let's bring back Bob. Hi Bob. Now, I gave Bob some code to move, so let's see how he does. So clearly something is wrong, Bob died pretty quickly there. So how do you fix this? Well, Bob has a few basic variables that control his movement. He has max speed, acceleration, and deceleration. Here's a few others, but these are the three that we'll be focusing on. So, the max speed is just something that you need to play around with to get feeling good. It depends on the type of game. If your game's fast paced, then obviously go for a higher one and vice versa. So, now Bob has a more appropriate speed. Let's see how he does. Ah, so something is still wrong and Bob is still dying brutally. So, let's take a look at the acceleration. If you want your game to feel more responsive, you'll want this pretty high. So as soon as you move, you should reach your max speed pretty quickly. The same goes for deceleration. If you stop moving, you should, you know, stop moving. So nice, let's see if Bob can survive this time. This is something that kills 99% of projects. So, you've been developing your game for months, adding game mechanics and enemies, and you finish all the art for the game. All you need to do now is make levels, but... Oh, when you placed an enemy, there was a small bug. So you just fix it and move on. But then, another bug appears. And then another, and then another. Welcome to mid-development hell. This is a place that a lot of game developers visit when they're making their game. What, you thought it would only take a month or so to make some levels for your game? Oof, were you wrong. This is something that 2 clicks Philip went into more detail in his video about, but this stage of making a game will definitely have you stumped for a while. You'll probably reach this point and go, oh, my game's not as fun as I thought it would be. The idea you built in your head for months, or even years, has finally become a reality, but it's nothing like you dreamt of. Don't worry though, this is a really common feeling, and take it from me, the guy who has only released one game in four years, push through it. The satisfaction you feel from finally finishing your game is incredible. To sit and say, hey, I just made a game is probably the best feeling in the world. Unfortunately, not a lot of developers get to say they've made a game because, I mean, yeah, you've made games, but they're more like demos or prototypes. You can't actually release them because they're just not ready yet. So my advice to anyone in this stage is just push through it. Persevere. Yeah, your game isn't as exciting as you planned, but people will enjoy it. I mean, someone has to. You spent all this time making it, and even if it's absolute dog shit when you release it, at least you can say, hey. I made a game. That's more than most developers can say. Now, feedback on your game is the most crucial part to making sure your game is actually fun. And since you've basically mastered your own game, putting more hours into it than anyone else, you already know how to play your game. You're a god, basically. But a new player won't have any of the knowledge that you have, so firstly, you need to assume that your player is stupid. Now, don't shove tutorials down their throat. Instead, slowly introduce the mechanics. Imagine if when you played Portal 2, you were thrown immediately into the hardest possible puzzle. It'd be like that if you didn't have a difficulty curve. My next point is, have people playtest the game. Take it from Valve, they start playtesting as soon as they have a working prototype. The more playtesters you have, the better, because you'll have a wider array of feedback. If you don't have anyone to playtest your game, and then you release it, you're definitely going to get a lot of negative feedback very quickly. 
You're probably wondering, what am I on about? Make games? Uh, I'm trying. Uh, yeah, I mean what I mean, make games. The best way to get to grips with the process is just to make games, so I challenge you to spend an hour tonight making a game. Limit yourself to just the one hour and make a game from start to finish. It doesn't have to be a long game, but just make one. And after you're done, sit back and think, <laughs> wow, this is a steaming pile of shit. But hey, I just made my first game. <laughs>